The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very happy to have you here along for the ride. We're going to get to a lot. We've got a lot to discuss uh, pretty much in all sports. Going to talk about dynasties, going to talk about a little bit of college football and NFL, uh, and even dabble into the NHL, as well as touch on our early impressions on college baseball. But before we do, we want to first let you guys know a sponsor of ours that we absolutely love. We absolutely love uh, doing anything with really all of our sponsors, but this sponsor means something to us because it is Big Frig. Big Frig is an amazing product. They have amazing tumblers uh, and coolers. You see us use the tumblers all the time. I don't have mine here in the hotel room with me, but because I just left it in the truck, I was using it all day, kept my, my coffee warm and then filled it up with water, wow. kept that cold. It was an amazing deal. I love it. I, I absolutely love my Big Frig tumbler, but of course we love their, their coolers as well. The coolers are an amazing product. Go check them out. They compare with any of the top brands in many ways. I think they're better. So I absolutely love Big Frig and all of their products. You can go check out everything that they've got they even have different things with logos on them and different designs on them uh, you can check out the badlands coolers one of the top products on the market you can check them out they've got amazing prices but on top of that not only do they give an amazing price they're going to give our listeners an extra 20 percent off when you use the code rising 20 uh, and get yourself an amazing 20 percent off you can't beat it uh, you have to go check out Big Frig. That's B I G F R I G dot com. And again, use that code RISING220. That's R I S I N G T O 20 for 20% off at checkout. But we're going to get into it before I do. I've got to bring in my co host. I've got Jeremy here along with, him, with me for the ride. Jeremy, how are we doing this fine Monday uh, afternoon as, as we're recording? I'll tell you what, it is a B E A U T full day here in the Midwest. And I'm still used to. I'm still used to it being like 30, maybe 40 degrees. We broke 75 degrees today, and it's late February. I kid you not, everybody. I want to go break out the golf the golf clubs and go out to the course, but unfortunately, my compadre is not here, so I didn't want to go play golf by myself. And my my lady was at work, so I just decided to stay around the house I've, and clean. I've got to, but I've got to work. I'm going to cut the, the chit chat, Josh. I know we got a lot to talk to. Yeah, I've got to work up the, the courage to be able to go out and just hit the course whenever I want by myself because I just don't like going out by myself. It's pretty much anything. I just I'd rather I'd rather do it with Neither somebody. Neither do I. Uh, and and I think golf is definitely one of those yeah. one of those things. I've just got to do it with someone rather than do it by myself. But we're gonna start off mm -hmm. and talk about something. Obviously, I love bringing up the Oklahoma anytime I can, but. Uh, I think they deserve a praise whenever they get to something stay. like this. I want to talk about Oklahoma softball and look at what they're able to do. OU softball is on a 67-game winning streak, absolutely on a tear. Uh, they, they look absolutely dominant, too. They had a couple of run rules this past weekend. Uh, they really do look so amazing. Uh, and, and when you look at them, I mean, they, they don't look much different. We've talked about Oklahoma softball in the past because of how dominant they are. They don't look that much different so far this year. And so going into it, man, I just uh, looking at them, they're 14 and 0 so far on this season. Uh, they're, like I said, 67 game winning streak. They're, they're winning against good teams this year, too. One of the criticisms about Oklahoma softball was that they face all these cupcakes. And so, of course, you can you can win whenever you're going against these cupcakes. But earlier, uh, this would have been week one. They faced number nine, Duke. They went against number number uh, 10, Washington. Uh, and so looking at that, I mean, they started off their first week with some tough ones. Uh, and then, of course, most people won't won't recognize, but McNeese State is a pretty tough team. They're one of those good softball teams. They went against an SEC team and won nine to three this past weekend. Uh, number 20, Mississippi State. So they ended up beating them, uh, beat Wisconsin in five innings on a run rule. Uh, that was 10 to two. Uh, and then shut out San Diego State. They beat Seattle in six innings, eight to zero on a run rule. And then Loyola, uh, yeah, Loyola Marymount, nine to zero in another five inning run rule. They've been on a tear, and I don't think they are looking uh, to to slow down anytime soon. I mean, they are a, an amazing dynasty. Jeremy, can you think of any dynasties in the entirety of sports that are any greater than what we're seeing out of Oklahoma softball right now? Realistically. I could say, no, there's nothing better than <laughs> OU softball, if I had to tell you honestly, Josh. I mean, you look at OU softball, I don't know what can physically stop them. There's no kryptonite against Oklahoma's softball team. Ever since 
I can't remember the last time I can honestly say I've seen a team. Like, I can see teams good, but I can't say I've ever seen teams this good. If you go on a 67-game winning streak, you are – you might as well just perform a – or not, not perform. You might as well form a professional softball league and just have the entire Oklahoma Sooners roster on it just because it just seems like every single one of their individual players just – puts in 110% game in, game out. You don't see Oklahoma make very many errors in their game. You just see them either launching bombs or you see them launching doubles or you see anything, but you, you see singles obviously as well, but you don't see a lot of them compared to what you usually see for Oklahoma putting up runs. To me, it's just completely mind boggling to see an, a dominant Oklahoma softball program like this. And I tell you what, I don't think anybody can really stop them. And if they do, I'll I'll be a man of my words and eat them. But if you do beat them, good luck is all I'm going to yeah, say. I, I think it's a, it's amazing watching them, and and I, I really enjoy watching them. They they've been so good for the they're they're a three peat national champion championship team. So you got to mm -hmm. look at that. Uh, they they run over just about anyone they, they step in the you know on the on the field with. So it's just looking and seeing the what diamond, they yeah. they do. I mean, they are absolutely dominant. They are so so fun to watch. Uh, and, and really, there's a ton of other teams, too. I think Alabama, Texas is looking really good. That's going to be a really big test coming up. Uh, they've been dominant so far this season, mm -hmm. too. But there's been a lot of softball teams. And, and whoever your team is, go check out their softball program because I promise you, I think there's so much heart and so much uh, pride being played out there in, in women's softball. Uh, and I, I definitely think that's a sport that needs a little more love just because these these ladies, they, they put a lot Absolutely. on the line. They, they, they go out there and they fight really hard. So I, I love watching it, and I hope you guys can get into it too. But uh, let's jump over to the NHL because, Jeremy, I hear that there's a guy that's looking a little bit more like his old self. I mean, it's always a, it's always a fun time when you get to see uh, home sweet home for what this guy has done. Patrick Kane finally got to make his nice homecoming going back to Chicago against his former team. Now, obviously with the Detroit Red Wings, then being back in Chicago, they had a big, big ceremony video presentation during one of, during one of the TV timeouts. Then of course you can see the, the look on Patrick Kane's face. It was really, really tough to hold back the tears. And then I, I don't blame him one ounce at all. I mean, the man's been in Chicago with the Blackhawks for oh, a long time. He was there in 2007, then he parted ways with Chicago um, mid-22, 23 season to go over to your New York Rangers. Then from his time in Chicago, let's just put it this way, he had a little over 400 goals, and he has the nickname Showtime. If you don't know why his nickname is called Showtime, just look up Patrick Kane and his highlights, and you'll see why. But that's besides the point. Patrick Kane – he definitely had a real emotional time being back in Chicago, but to say the least, it was bittersweet just because watching the watching the Detroit Red Wings play the Chicago Blackhawks, it couldn't have ended in any better way. Patrick Kane on a breakaway in overtime, and you can probably guess how the outcome ended. Top shelf, back in the net, and of course you see Patrick Kane celebrating, looking at the crowd, just saying showtime. Now, if I was in Patrick Kane's shoes – my butterfly, uh, my butterfly anxious meter would be through the roof of the arena just because of how much memories and blood, sweat, and tears he's put with that Chicago Blackhawks organization. And obviously, it was one thing to see Patrick Kane to be back in Chicago for one, but just to see him get the win in Chicago the way that it did, it was truly humbling and unbelievable. And I can I can tell you, Josh, there was probably a lot of Chicago fans that when they saw him score the overtime winner goal, they wanted to cheer deep down inside, but they were probably too scared to because they were probably going to think that they're a traitor just because it's on the Detroit Wings. But Josh, Patrick Kane, what more can you say about the man? He's just been absolutely lights out just for his hockey career. I mean, and he's only 35, so he's still got some time yeah. left in him. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about him whenever he Looking came over to my New York Rangers and seeing his potential and what he could do. We knew that the Rangers were already a really good team going into the playoffs, and then they mm -hmm. add him to the roster. We talked about how exciting that was. Obviously, it didn't pan out with him in New York. I'm not sure what it was that deterred him from wanting to stick around there. 
Um, but, and, and it just didn't mm -hmm. seem like it fit the way that we were hoping it would, but it was still a lot of fun to watch him there in New York. I appreciate him and his effort and everything that he did to, to, to give to New York the way that he did. Cause the Rangers were a great team last year, made, made it so close, uh, and, and, and fought really hard, but seeing him go over to with Detroit of obviously Detroit looking much better this year than, than they have in years past. They're looking pretty solid. And it, it's, it's always a really fun story when you've got a legend coming back home like this in any sport. Uh, you know, we, we talk about, you know, just about every time that Russell Westbrook comes back to OKC, he gets a standing ovation. Uh, you know, and you, you look at different different guys and, and them coming back to their their home, their home, you know, where they started their career and where they spent so much time of their career. There's there's still a bond. And of course, LeBron, the first time he came back to to Cleveland and there's all kinds of, you know, big scenarios where you can look at and see this kind of this kind of, uh, I guess, emotion being put in the game. But on top of that, like you just kind of laid out and painted a perfect picture of him scoring to win the game for his team. I, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it's it's so much so much fun to watch that. I can I can just sit there and watch the the goal on repeat just because it was really showtime for showtime. But that's outside the topic. But Josh, I know I've saw I've seen some um, some mentions on social media talking about the college football and the playoff committee. What exactly are they going to be doing this upcoming yeah, down the road here? So this is something interesting to to take into consideration. So we've talked about the college football yeah. playoff, the way that it came from four, and all of a sudden we jumped to 12. We talked about this how many times on this show? I mean, mm -hmm. numerous times. A lot. <laughs> so it was such a big jump, and we, we all kind of were against being, you know, kind of expanding it so much. You need to take it step by step. Yeah. We talked about six teams. Six teams feels like a good one. Max, eight. Now they're talking about expanding the college football playoffs to 14 teams come 2026. Man. Now, this is something that is is early discussions. It may get turned down, but I, I kind of wanted to pick on, you know, I guess you and Blake was what, what my hopes were. Obviously, Blake traveling. He was down in Florida watching some baseball this weekend. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted, wanted to kind of pick your brain on this and, and see what you guys thought of this, because I know we've talked before. It feels like 12 was too much. Obviously, we're excited for the 12. How do you feel about the 14, though, if they were to discuss this and bringing this to life? If they were to bring this in, I I like seeing teams get opportunities to make the make the postseason. But 14 to me is too much. Like what, going back to what you obviously mentioned, we talked about this numerous times. Go from this number. OK, if you feel like we need a little bit more, bump it up a couple numbers or bump it up one number or whatever the situation is and just have one team get a buy. But you're if you're trying to bump it up to 14 teams in 2026, to me that's kind of just blowing the entire playoff proportion out of the out of the water just because it almost seems like you can see a team that shouldn't even belong in the playoffs get into the playoffs and then they're battling for against a team that could easily win the championship and then all of a sudden like it's there's right there's rights and there's wrongs to this. There's rights for some of the teams that you never get the opportunity to see in the playoffs. Yes, that's a good one. But for the wrongs is just fourteen teams is too much in my opinion, Josh. But yeah, I mean we, we like talked said, about twelve. Why, whenever um, we whenever we jumped up to twelve, I just thought that you're you're opening it up so much. No way. I like that. I like the fact that conference yeah. champions get a shot. I think that's fair. Uh, I think there's a lot of discussion mm -hmm. about maybe even co conference champions. You know, they don't like just a, because you're a conference champion you get them. But personally, if we're going to have these conferences and you're able to fight through, and especially as tough as conferences are now, now that we're narrowing them down, I think conferences getting a conference champions getting a lock into a playoff system i think that's a great way to start it off uh, and then it, it becomes a big discussion of how you want to do it after that but personally whenever i look at the, the 12 team playoff i'm very excited for 12 teams i'm excited for more football i think more meaningful football is is going to be a lot of fun for us right. to watch whenever it comes down to the playoff time but Definitely. Definitely. I, I just I, I just think it opens up too much parity you, you just got too much going into this benefactor. Like, just stick with a number and just let it go. Don't bump it. Just leave it, as they say in Frozen, just let it go. That's all I can really say about that, Josh. But 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we've got more college football news, and I want to hear from you because you you had some some uh, news kind of breaking out that you were talking about uh, with the Ohio State star uh, wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, this was definitely a shocker to me, just because you would think of Marvin Marvin Harrison Jr.'s talent and what he's able to show. He's not going to be performing at the NFL Combine this year, and. There, I was when I first saw this article about it, I was thinking, did he get injured? Did he get a sickness? Did something occur? Or from what I've found, I'll, I'll read you exactly what it says. Why is Marvin Harrison Jr. not attending the NFL Combine? According to Sports Illustrated, Harrison's intent has been to train for the rigors of an NFL season as opposed to spending months training for the drills and interviews of the NFL Scouting Combine. I understand that um, you don't you aren't even going to be at the combine, but to me, like you do you, if you don't want to be at the combine, okay, so be it. I'll still support you. But to me, that kind of seems like if I wasn't at the combine and I'm, I'm just paraphrasing this, everybody, if I'm not at the combine to me, I would think that would go down a little bit in my, um, in my projective picks to be such a higher up aspect. I know they were talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. being the number two pick in the upcoming draft, but Josh, do you think if he doesn't do anything, obviously, for the combine, do you think that's going to drop him lower into the into the draft category, or do you think he's going to stay potentially being at the number two spot? Yeah, I mean, he's projected in the top, for sure, no, ma- no matter what, I, nobody sees him dropping out of the top five. Uh, I No. I get this decision a little bit. Because the thing with Marvin Harrison Jr. is you are such a talent that everyone wants you. I would say the only man that is more wanted, the only player that is more wanted in this entire draft class is Caleb Williams. So I think regardless, he's going to be drafted somehow in the top five, regardless of if if he goes to the combine or not. And I think a lot of guys are going to start to look at this option when they're such a high talent, when they know they're going to get a a lottery pick, when they know that they're going to make some money off of uh, where they're drafted. I think you're going to start to see this happen a lot more where guys just opt out to going. Uh, I I can't recall. I remember seeing a few other guys that, that decided that they weren't going to go to the combine. And I think it just gets to the point where a lot of scouts don't really care how well or how poorly you perform in the combine. And that's been a known thing for quite some time. A lot of scouts may have already told uh, and, and I don't know this for sure, but a lot of scouts may have told Marvin Harrison Jr., hey, we've seen enough of you. We don't need to see you in the combine. The stuff in the combine doesn't matter to us because we don't care about your 40 time. We know that you're fast. We don't care about how how high you end up in jumping uh, in the combine because we know we've seen you jump up for catches. Uh, we don't We don't care how long you can jump. We don't care how much you can bench because we know you're tough. All of that stuff doesn't matter to a lot of scouts. So if he's told, hey, we really want you by the top five teams. And he knows he's going to go to one of those top five teams. Why even risk it? Um, The thing that kind of shocked me about this story was that not only is he skipping the combine, but he also doesn't have an agent, but I guess with him, maybe it's because he's got dad and and dad knows the ins and outs of all this process. So that could be the case, but uh, that was a little surprising to me. I I would be nervous going into such a big deal without having an agent to help me out personally. Yeah. It's one thing to go, and ditch the ditch the uh, combine, but if you're not going in there with an agent, my I tell you what, if I had a briefcase, I would have so much anxiety medication that would be mind boggling to me. But going outside of college football, I know we're going to be going back into the NFL, which seems like it's a long ways away, but we all know it'll be soon. It'll be here sooner than later. Josh, there's talking about some raises and some things. What are they going to be raising exactly? Yeah, and there's a lot to get to that, and it's it's a lot about talking about the raising of, of the salary caps, but something that we want to get to and raise to your attention before getting there is how amazing Factor is, because Factor is a delicious, ready-to-eat meal-making system, and it, it's a way to make eating and making dinner better every day. Uh, it makes it so much easier. So whatever tomorrow, uh, wh- wherever tomorrow takes you, you can be ready with prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals del- delivered right to your door. That's the amazing thing. And you heard that right. They deliver it to you. You don't have to go to the store anymore because Factor yeah. is now here to save you. You'll have over 35 different options per <laughs> week to choose from, including keto, 
calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and so much more. And there's even more to enjoy with 55 nutrition packed add-ons to help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel good week of meals ready to go. We absolutely love factor meals. The thing that I love about it is, as you can see right now, I'm in a hotel room again, and I, I'm, I work on the road a lot. And so the amazing thing with factor is that whenever the, my, my hotel has a, a microwave, which it does here, I know I can eat healthy and cheaper uh, because we've done the math. Uh, whenever you, you sign up and save, you, uh, you can, you can be saving so much money because factor is so much less expensive than takeout and every meal is also going to make you feel better because it's dietitian approved and it's nutritious and delicious uh it's an amazing deal not only that but it's also very quick so a lot of times i'm trying to hurry up and scramble back here hop on and get loaded up to record the podcast and i've got to hurry up and eat a meal real quick beforehand all i have to do is pop that in the microwave for two minutes and it's ready to go and it tastes absolutely delicious it is real chef prepared food so you don't have to worry about it being fake tv dinner kind of meals mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing not only that but it's very flexible to your schedule because as i mentioned i'm on the road maybe i left a few of them at home and i don't get to them this week factor makes it really easy for me to reschedule uh, you can schedule six to 18 meals per week plus you can pause or reschedule all of your deliveries anytime you need to so it makes everything so much easier about meal planning and cooking and and just eating healthier so check out factor meals by going to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 and get yourself 50% off your first packs and get two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active. That's code rising250, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 at factormeals.com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 and get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active. Go check them out. It's an amazing way to eat, keep yourself healthier, and save so much time in the process. But let's get over to it because as we alluded to, salary caps starting to look a little bit different in the NFL. And uh, this is this is kind of a, a big news, uh, especially for if you're an NFL fan uh, for a team, maybe like you, Jeremy, we were talking about what your your Bengals could do to kind of save themselves this offseason. Well, I mean, this may be a, a great option, uh, you know, because now the NFL has announced that they're going to be raising to a new record of salary cap of two hundred and fifty five point four million dollars per team. Uh, this is a 13.6% increase over last year's salary cap signing, uh, which is just an, an extremely high amount. Uh, and you have to look at how much they they earned as, an, as the NFL, how much they earned this last year and see how much, you know, that they were, they were able to kind of manipulate this number. And for teams, I think the teams that benefit the most off the top of my mind would be teams like maybe, like I said, I think your Bengals could benefit because they want to keep guys like T Higgins uh, and a couple of the defensive guys, mm -hmm. maybe bring a defensive guy in and the free agency market move around that salary cap. And now they've got an extra uh, $30.6 million to work with. Um, so, I mean, that's just, that's crazy. Um, so, you know, just looking at that, I think teams like your Bengals, the 49ers as stacked as they are, <laughs> I think they need to keep a lot of that talent there. They're now able to, to maneuver their money around and, and try to manage their money in a way that could keep guys there. Uh, so I, I think teams like that, or uh, maybe even the Green Bay Packers, uh, you know, I, I think that's another another team that I was thinking of that, you know, they've got some guys that are on a free agent market right now. Um, but I mean, this number to me just seemed so crazy. We knew that it was going to increase. I was thinking maybe more along the lines of three to 6%, maybe up to 8% because they had a really good year in 2023. Um, but I mean, Jeremy, mm -hmm. what do you think about this, this increase of 13.6% there? Uh, and how ironic too, 13. And once I first saw it, I literally grabbed some glass cleaner, cleaned these things off. Cause I thought I couldn't see out these things. Right. I first thought it said 3.6 and I looked and I'm like, there's a one in front of that thing. Holy crap. Like, 13.6% is a big, big jump for the salary cap space now. Like, <clears throat> I'm thankful that the Cincinnati Bengals did re-sign T. Higgins. That was that was one thing that I was really, really thankful for because if they didn't, I was going to probably have an emotional breakdown and cry. But um, 
this is definitely something that can help out a lot of NFL teams for this upcoming year and later down the road for where they can save these potential five-star players and then get them to where they can have them in the long run. But 13.6% still completely mind boggles me. I was thinking along the same lines as you, maybe five six percent maybe eight percent at the absolute most but seriously when i saw 13.6 percent i thought the sky's the limit for a lot of these teams because you you brought it up the best some of these teams they they kind of desperately need to have some of that extra salary cap money just so you can see them succeed going into the season and there's a lot of teams that are out there that do need those kind of possibilities and this is definitely a um a big breather for some of those teams that they can have this big of a salary cap now, and then they can potentially look at the year and think of a lot better for having some of these big key players, Josh. So it's definitely a big boost. Yeah. So, I mean, for everyone, like, like I said, it's $30.6 million per team more because last year was $224.8 million. So, I mean, that, that number uh, increasingly, the the amount that it increased is just a crazy amount. Um, But uh, mm-hmm. You know, like I said, it's just kind of ironic that it's 13 uh, percent. I didn't think about that until I was just now talking about it uh, and, and talking about that. This could add to the conspiracy, the Taylor Swift conspiracy that it raised 13 percent because of Taylor Swift. Um, who knows? Oh, but, my God. Uh, <laughs> no, you, you've got to You've got to throw in the speculation. That, no. <laughs> you've got to throw in the speculation because I'm sure that that oh is going to come God. into fruition one way or another. But. Uh, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see what this does for teams because now you talk about uh, another team too that it's I didn't bad. think about until just now, Tampa Bay, trying to sign Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield. Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, sure. they've got a, a, a defensive guy too. Is it Winfield that is up? I think it might be Winfield that uh, might be up for, for a contract extension. Um, but they're, they're, I know they've got, I they've got so. some guys that they want to sign back too. So Tampa Bay would be another team that I didn't think about until just now uh, that, that could really use this extra – you know, extra uh, money to, to kind of mo- maneuver around and try to keep guys around. So it, it's, it's a lot of, yeah. a lot of excitement, uh, you know, talking about everything that's going down in the NFL. Um, a few moments later, I was going to try to get your thoughts. Uh, what, what do we have? Who's your most impressive team so far in college baseball that you've seen? My most impressive team so far this year. It's hard to pick anybody I, else, I like, but I feel like there's quite a few that normally, you can look I, at too. I mean, first off, I'll list off the top 10 for you guys first. Number one, sitting at Wake Forest. Number two, Arkansas. Go Razorbacks. Three, the Bayou down in LSU. Four, go Gators. Four. Number five, them Horn Frogs, TCU. Number six, Oregon State. Seven, Texas A&M. Number eight, good old Rocky Top, Tennessee. That I'll never sing again. Um, number nine, Vandy, Vanderbilt. And center number 10 is Clemson. But looking throughout the um, the most recent poll for everybody in the rankings, the one that's kind of stuck out to me a little bit that jumped the that has jumped the biggest on me is um, like take it for granted it's still early in the year, everybody, but Wake Forest is going to be hard to beat, obviously. I mean, they're six and one, but there's a lot of teams that are seven and oh and down lower in the in the uh, in the rankings here but watching a team that i think is going to be up there a little bit more is clemson like i said they're sitting at number 10 they're six and one but with how i've watched them play they've been playing really really dominant and it it definitely is one of those situations to where you have to do it both ways be smart on the ball get good contact with it and try and shoot for a gap or just shoot for a single or whatever the situation is and then switching out to the other the defensive side you just got to make smart reads make good adjustments and make sure everybody's on the same page here but Josh, I know, like I said, <clears throat> I listed off just the top 10 here. Is there a team that you would say you definitely need to keep your eye out just talking about these top 10 teams? And like I said, I know it's really early in the year for college baseball so far, but is there a team that sticks out to you that you definitely want to keep your eye out? Yeah, so far I'm, I'm looking – I mean, I, I do want to give a little bit of a shout-out to the Crimson Tide. I think they're looking good so far in the beginning. Uh, one thing to note – it's hard talking about college baseball 
uh, or you know even the MLB this early into a season or even the NHL. It's it's just now getting past the halfway mm-hmm. mark in the NHL, and we can finally start talking about that. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so that's kind of the same way that you have to kind of treat baseball as a whole. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm looking over at the Crimson Tide, tough schedule. But so far, seeing them start off at eight and zero, that's a really good start. But what you have to worry about, especially being an SEC team is that getting off to a hot start don't let don't let your head get too far ahead of yourself and Mm -hmm. and still humble yourself um they they had some really good games uh against manhattan college started off with them 15 and 0 or 15 to 0 uh run rule in the seventh inning on them in one of those games uh and then just their offense rolled 12 to 0 uh and then uh, Valaprezio, uh, that was another 14 to do two run to a uh, run in the seventh. They did that twice. Uh, Cause another one, uh, 13 and three, and or I guess three times. I didn't even see that on this schedule here. Uh, cause 11 to one another time. So, I mean, they're, they're coming in really strong, but they haven't had the toughest of schedules yet. So, uh, they're, they're surprised that they surprised me on, on how hot they're starting off, but recognize that you're in the sec because you've got teams like Arkansas who are really good at baseball. LSU is always going to be good. Uh, Florida looking good. Uh, you know, and then of course you've got Tennessee, uh, who my Sooners did beat in a, in a very surprising fifth inning. Yeah. Or, or, uh, I'm trying to think. No, it wasn't fifth inning. It was. Uh, it was. I, I think it was. Sixth. I think it was in the ninth that they had a, oh, really? a big, big run and ended up getting back ahead. Uh, and so, you know, there was. Anyways, you know, you you look through the SEC and see a lot of very tough teams. Another team that uh, is looking really good that I love to see up there is TCU. They're just such a fun program to watch overall in all athletics. Uh, their, their baseball facilities. I really want to go there someday because their baseball f- facilities are so nice. That's because their baseball team is so good. So, I mean, looking at it, there's a lot of big time teams. I think Vanderbilt will start to find their rhythm and start to do better. Uh, they're starting off kind of slow, but uh, overall, it's still way too early to overhype any kind of team or any team there in the top 25 or even really in, in the top 50. But it's also mm-hmm. too early to freak out and say, oh no, we've got to get something going. So uh, yeah. it's definitely time to just kind of take it slow. Um, but we'll definitely be talking a lot more on college baseball. I know we want to get into college baseball a little more on the program. Uh, so please stick around for that. We're going to get get into MLB and we're going to talk a lot more about that, especially like I said, Blake is our is our baseball guy. I'm, I'm still newly getting into it. I know Jeremy's kind of on the same page as me trying to get more of a diehard feel for baseball because it is a fun sport. We want to we want to help uh, baseball grow again and get back to the, their glory days. But guys, that's pretty much all we've got for you. We thank you so much for watching on YouTube if you've watched. Uh, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to, make sure to give us a five-star review. Over on YouTube, you can hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, but you can also join the channel. Become a member today and help support the, the podcast. Uh, help us to grow, do more things. Uh, we really appreciate everybody who has become a member so far, but you can click that link down in the, in the description to become a member and help support financially and help us help fund the podcast. And we want to give that back to you by giving you exclusive content, giveaways, and so much more. So go check that out. Uh, And you can always check us out here on YouTube as well as over on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, and even that TikTok thing as well. So go show us some love over there. We'd love to hear more from you guys. We thank you all so much for all of the love, all of the support. We'll see you next time.